Okay, let's solve this equation. We have 2 times x plus 3 is equal to 5 times 4x plus 1. So as I said, this is an equation, and we could tell it's an equation if we have this little equal sign there. But what type of math is this? Well, solving equations with variables is an example of algebra. So we're doing um, algebra, and this is fairly basic algebra. But, uh, you know, if you haven't seen this before, if this is a, a struggle to you or, you know, you find this difficult, don't worry, okay? Uh, math, you know, is relative, okay? So uh, if you've never done this before, then, of course, you're going to find it a little bit difficult. But I'm going to explain how to do this problem step by step. And along the way, we're going to emphasize some real foundational concepts of uh, solving equations in algebra, okay? So no need to worry. Uh, by the time you finish this video, you will be able to handle this problem, no sweat. Okay, uh, so before we get going, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that if you're interested. Okay, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I offer full math courses so if you got to take a math course completely independently, you could take one of my courses. But if you're taking a course uh, right now, whether in class or online, my program can help you out as well. I offer uh, full lessons, and I teach you how to solve the most uh, common uh, problems in middle uh, school math, high school math, and even college-level mathematics. I literally solve thousands of problems. But uh, if you're a, uh, a math student, and I'm kind of assuming you are if you're checking this video out, you need to understand the golden rule of math, and that is math notes, okay? Uh, for me, decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and those students that find it more important to look at their cell phone, talk to their best friend, uh, to doodle, and do homework from other classes, typically struggle in math, okay? You don't want to be... Uh, <clears throat> distracted as a teacher is teaching mathematics. And one way to keep you engaged is to be taking notes, paying attention. So if you're not, uh, you know, doing well in math, take a look at your math notes, okay? Improve, right? When I was a student, way back in the good old days, I was terrible at note-taking and I paid the price. So over the years, I've just seen this trend and I emphasize it over and over again because, you know, let's say you're struggling to understand algebra, right? And I, I would have students come to me They'll be like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not doing well. I don't understand how to do a problem like this. I said, let me see your notes on uh, taking, you know, solving equations. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, my notes. So the, yeah, my dog ate my homework and my notes. I don't have my notes. Well, then obviously you can see that's the problem. So start with your note taking in terms of improving your, your uh, math skills. Okay. So, but in the meantime, uh, you need something to study from. So I actually have some notes that you can study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Very detailed, comprehensive notes. You can uh, use those as you improve your note-taking skills. Okay, let's get into this problem. And the objective here, all right, when we're solving an equation is what? We're trying to figure out the value of this variable x. So x represents some number, and there's some number, okay, such that when we would plug it in here and replace this x for that number, the left-hand side will equal the right-hand side when we do all this math. Okay, so let's just take a look at some real basic examples here, and then we'll do this problem. So here is an equation. Okay, yes, this is an equation. And uh, wouldn't you love it if every single math problem was like this? Solve this equation. What number is equal to 7? And you'd be like, I know, I know. Uh, 7. 7 is equal to 7, so x is equal to 7 is the correct answer in this equation. And you would be correct. Okay, I would give you a check mark and an A plus, and you would be awesome. Okay, so the objective when we're solving an equation is to figure out what the value here needs to be in order for the, uh, the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side. So now let's do this equation 2x is equal to 14. Okay, how about that equation? Can you do that? So you're like, okay, 2 times x. What does this mean in algebra? This means 2 times some number is 14. So if I told you, hey, uh, 2 times what number is 14? Do you know what that number is? Uh, can you identify that number? You would say, yes, that number is 7. Okay, 
And that is correct. So to solve this equation, we know the answer is 7. We need to know the steps, right? So to solve an equation like this, to get to x, to get back to x by itself, I would need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So I would get x is equal to 7. And this brings me to um, kind of another huge principle of mathematics and algebra, is that in order to get x by itself, all right, I want to take 2 and divide it by 2, because that is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I would have 1x, all right, right here. But uh, we don't uh, write things as 1x. We just say that it's x, all right? So this x by itself, there's really a 1 here. We never write the 1. So to get back to x, I can just divide this uh, 2 by another 2, and it gets me back to 1, or x, right? That's the whole goal when we're solving equations to get that variable by itself. But whatever I do to one side of the equation, I, could, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side of the equation. Just remember that in algebra. When you're solving equations, that is uh, just extremely, extremely you know, fundamental. And you kind of think of it as a seesaw or a teeter-totter, depending on where you uh, kind of grew up. Let's say there's one person here, and there's another person there. Okay, and let's say they both weigh 100 pounds. If they're 100 pounds, they're perfectly balanced. Assume that they're, you know, equal uh, distance uh, from the fulcrum here, right? So they're perfectly balanced. But let's say someone put uh, 20, uh, 20 pounds over here. What happens? Well, the thing goes this way, right? The little seesaw or teeter-totter. Teeter so it becomes out of balance. But if I give this person 20 pounds, then it gets back in uh, balance. Or if I took away 30 pounds or whatever I did, as long as I do the same thing equally to both sides. This thing remains in balance. Same thing when we're solving equations. You got to do, um, you got to be thinking, got to keep this equation in balance, constant balance. So whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other side. So here, 2x equals uh, 14. Divide both sides of the equation by 2. I get x is equal to 7. Okay. So I'm really emphasizing these fundamental concepts of solving equations. Okay. This is you know, what a solution represents, you know, what the, you know, kind of like what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the value that balances both sides of the equation. That's the objective, right? And there's all these little rules that we have to follow. Now, there's one more uh, rule. We're actually going to get into this problem. We'll, we'll discuss it. And actually, there's several other rules. But uh, for this particular problem, there's one other thing I really need to emphasize, and that is the distributor property, okay? Because right here, I can't do anything with this equation yet because I, I don't have like my algebraic terms uh, written like say 2x. I have a 2 outside of this x plus 3. So in order to get this equation going in the right um, um, you know, direction, if you will, I have to apply the distributor property. Anytime you see parentheses and things like this with a number outside of it, and these things are going to be a sum two things being added up like a variable and with a plus or minus, and you have a number outside of it, just instinctively think, oh, the distributor property, okay? So what is the distributor property? Well, let's go ahead and do it here. Uh, we're going to take this 2, we're going to multiply it by that x, and we're going to multiply this 2 by that 3. We're going to distribute this 2 to the x and 3, the distributor property. And the distributor property is another way to do multiplication. I have tons of videos on it in my pre-algebra playlist. Uh, you know, I could really, you know, teach extensively on all the principles we need to understand this problem. But I, I don't want to uh, make this video too long, okay? But I'm just trying to emphasize some of the more, um, uh, the biggest, the most apparent things we need in this particular problem. So that's the distributor property. So let's go ahead and do this now. 2 times x is 2x. Then 2 times 3 is 6, okay? So now, instead of seeing this as 2 times x plus 3, I have 2x plus 6. These are equivalent, okay? But I want to see this part of the equation written this way. So let's go ahead and do this side of the equation the same way because it's a uh, distributive property situation. Now, you, sometimes you don't see the distributive property. You don't have to do it in some equations. If it's not there, then, you know, obviously you don't look for it. But when you see these parentheses with a number outside of it, it could be a decimal, negative number, a fraction, doesn't make a difference. We have to go ahead and do the distrib distributive property right away. It's one of the first things you need to do in solving equations if you have that situation in the equation. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. 
5 times 4x is 20x, and then we have 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, so now this is uh, a better situation to be working with than this. Here we're kind of locked in. We can't do anything with these individual terms because I can't see them yet, but with the distributor property, now I have 2x plus 6 equals 20x plus 5, and now I can continue on with the problem. Now, what we really want to do uh, when we're solving equations in algebra is to get all of our variables on the left-hand side and all of our numbers on the right-hand side. It's like, it's like a team, right? Like one team and another team. So like, all right, all numbers report to the right-hand side and all variable terms report to the left-hand side. Okay, so we got to shuffle these around. Everyone's got to kind of get to the right place. So by looking at this, we're like, okay, this 6, uh, you need to be over here on your side. And this 20x, you got to be over here on your side. So we got to get everybody in the right uh, location. That's the next thing we want to do in this equation in, and in general solving um, uh, in algebra, okay, equation solving. All right. So let's uh, handle the 6 first. So how can I get rid of this 6 on the left-hand side and, and put it on the right-hand side? Well, I just can't go like, okay, cross it out and put a 6 there. Okay, what's the point or what's the main principle that we want to follow? Remember, go back to the seesaw. We want to uh, keep uh, the equation in balance. So whatever I do to one side, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So check this out. If I want to get rid of the 6 here and put an equivalent number on the other side, what if I subtract 6 on this side of the equation? So if I subtract 6 right there, well, what happens? Well, that 6 goes away, all right? And that's exactly what I want. I don't want the number on the left-hand side, so let's just uh, take it away, right? But if I do it, if I subtract 6 over here, I got to subtract 6 on the right-hand side, see? So I'm being fair here, so let's subtract 6 over here. Numbers with numbers with variables uh, with variables. So and this way, you kind of add down in a column manner. So this is going to be 2x plus nothing. So that's just give me, uh, this gives me uh, 2x. And 6 plus a negative 6 is 0. Okay, it goes away. All right, we'll just leave it like that. 20x plus nothing is 20x. And then 5 plus a negative 6, hopefully you're good with your positive and negative numbers. That is a negative 1. Okay. So what I have done is I moved this 6 over to the other side of the equation. It just looks this way, okay? And I did it by being nice and fair. I took 6 away or added negative 6 to both sides of the equation or subtracted 6 from both sides of the equation. And that's how we do it. That's how we maneuver things around, okay? All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and continue to get everybody in the right uh, location. And I'm not there yet. Right, I, uh, I'm saying to myself, okay, I got variables and I got my numbers. I need to get all my numbers to this side and all my variables to this side. So let's take a look at what we have. Okay, I only have one number now, so that looks pretty good. But I got this variable over here. It needs to go over to the left-hand side. Okay, so now we got to move this guy, and we're going to move that 20x exactly the way we moved uh, our 6. Okay, so how can I get rid of that 20x over here? How about we subtract it away? But if I subtract a 20x on this side, I got to subtract a 20x over here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. So what do we got? I got 2x plus a negative 20x. That's going to be negative 18x is equal to 20x plus negative 20x is zero. That goes away. And I have negative one right there. Okay. So what does that mean to me? Well, when I'm trying to solve an equation, I want to know what x is equal to, all right? That's what I'm trying to do. I want to get x by itself, all right? So how can I get x by itself? I got a negative 18 in front of that x. So to get x by itself, I can just simply divide a negative 18 by a negative 18. That gives me a positive 1x or just x, right? So x is the same thing as a positive 1x. But if I divide this side of the equation by negative 18, I got to divide this side of the equation by negative 18. And of course, I know, I know that you know that a negative divided by a negative is positive. So this is going to be 1 over 18, and that is our answer, okay? That is our solution. So if you got that uh, correct, give yourself a happy face 
and a 100% and a few stars just for good, good order. Okay. That's very good. All right. But again, you know, uh, every equation in, in algebra that you're going to solve is going to be different. All right. Here, you know, we're doing the distributive property. Sometimes we don't have to do the distributive property, but some other principles that we were following, okay, was, uh, um, combining like terms. Okay, so we need to know how to combine like terms. The distributive property, I would say the distributive property really um, tends to give a lot of students problems. So if you're, you know, doing these type of um, equations in your class and you're making a lot of errors with them, check out the distributive property. Okay, make sure you understand that well. And of course, positive and negative numbers, you got to know what you're doing there. Um, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of little sub skills that we need to understand in order to solve these type of equations. Okay. But once you get an equation like this down, then you can kind of move on to more exciting things. And I hope that you do because algebra and math is awesome. All right. Just tell yourself that a hundred times a day and you'll be like, math is awesome. Algebra is awesome. And you'll want to continue to learn more. Okay. Uh, of course, if you're not understanding or struggling, then then it's not fun. And then it's going to be like, oh, I hate math. I don't want to do any more of it. But you got to slow things down. Or right? if you're struggling in math, you know, uh, slow things down. You know, go back a few steps, build a strong math foundation, and that's how you're really going to learn and enjoy math. And uh, with those uh, little comments in mind, if you enjoyed this video or liked it in, uh, in some manner, please consider smashing the like button. And also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel, basic to advanced math, all there for you. Um, as you can tell, I'm, I'm obsessed with teaching math. I love this subject. But if you really want my best math help, uh, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.